It is currently 2 a.m. on the dot. Uh, May 4th, 2023. I stayed up the night just to finish up some last minute things. I finished doing all my exhaust. So I finished cutting the hole for the O2 sensor mount. The first O2 sensor mount on the 3-4 downpipe, the nuts were all stripped and messed up. So I ended up cutting that O2 mount for the upstream and I welded it in a new one. And then after that, I welded another one for the downstream. So good thing I ordered two kits off of Yoda shop. But that's all done. It's all connected to the muffler. It's uh, the hangers are connected to it. The tailpipe was a little bit long, so I chopped off like two inches of it. So I'll show you guys that later. Exhaust is done. We just have to wait for the upstream O2 sensor. I ordered the downstream. I was gonna use the upstream. This was the original upstream on it, but it looks pretty nasty. I'll keep it for spear. So my new upstream O2 should be here today. The cam sensor should be here today and the new radiator should be here today. Those three things, once we install it and once we add coolant, we can start it. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna go sleep. I'll see you guys in the morning. Here it is, today's the final day. We have our last parts coming in. <coughs> Cam sensor, new radiator, and then we are ready to butt it up. Went ahead and pulled the Yoda out of the garage so I can clean the garage. Swept the garage. It's all nice and clean from all the dust and grinding, welding and dirt and stuff. And then I gotta clean and organize the garage. But for the most part, there it is, baby. <coughs> 3.4, are you excited, Lincoln? Maybe daddy give you this car when you turn 16. Man, <clears throat> look at this beautiful work. Beautiful, beautiful. Cam sensor, <coughs> radiator, hook up the belts, hook up the radiator hoses, fill the coolant hose, <coughs> plug in the first, the plug in the upstream O2, and then new, do the honor, turn on the vehicle. Yes, daddy's up here. Hello, you wanna come up? Yep, all the parts will be here later this afternoon, so maybe I'll start it up tonight, but so fun, man. So stoked. The truck, even with the engine in the bay, the front is still higher than the back. So I'm going to have to get some added leaf because right now it's squatting. I'm not really a fan of it, so I got to get some, even with the new shock, it's still squatting, so we're going to put some added leaf. It's only 50 bucks from Amazon or eBay. Let me go ahead and show you guys the exhaust. Didn't show you guys that last night. I did that last night at 2 a.m. or at 1 a.m. You got the downpipe, first O2, and then the second O2 is around right there, right there. The second O2 is already mounted, and then... It goes into the 3.0 flange and then it goes into the Walker exhaust uh, 47716 I believe and the Walker exhaust is already made out it's already curved for the pickup I had to put a new mount I had to put a new engine mount right here or new uh, hanger but and then over here hold on baby at the tip <coughs> At the tip, I just put a hanger right there. Put a new hanger right there where the stock location is. The tip was sticking out about like right here, which is a bit too much, so I went ahead and cut about an inch and a half off. Mm, exhaust! Boom, boom! Uh -huh. Boom, boom! Oh, uh, yeah, it's gonna go boom, boom in a bit. That blue hose right there is the breather hose <coughs> for the differential. And that's pretty much it guys we're gonna go ahead and remove that rear bumper it's all bent and rusty so I'm gonna go ahead and get a trail gear bumper I tried removing it, the, removing it the other day but the bolts were all super rusted in there so I decided that I'm, I'll fight them another day but that's not important okay hold on today is May 4th 2023 it's been about one month since I started the project we got the final parts in. Went with the new radiator from Amazon, no, from AutoZone. 
the original radiator was still good it was the original toyota one the metal ones the good one um but i just didn't feel like using it i'm gonna keep it for spare the cam sensor arrived in this is from ebay a new denso cam sensor the one off the truck originally the plug have fuse into the other plug it was basically all melted so that's the reason why we went ahead and got a new one we also got we also went ahead and got a new o2 sensor uh last night we installed the rear and this is the upstream our front shocks <coughs> came in front shots by kyb we're not going to install these yet i want i want to get the 30 the 34 running and then we'll go ahead and install this another day and then these are just spare parts. And then these are the new hose for the radiator. What happened? Okay, hold on. Let's do a video. Okay. All right, everyone. So two busy boys, but we have the radiator, everything installed, battery plugged in, first O2 sensor plugged in. All the belts are good. I forgot to buy one thing, and that was the radiator cap. Um, I still have my old radiator cap, but I want to go get a new one. But right now, we can still go ahead and bleed the system. Or at least pour coolant and start it up. Woo! Took about, what, 30 days or so to uh, do this bill and doing one more last check. I think we got everything in there. We got ATF fluid and the power steering. Clutch fluid. Brake fluid is good. Oil. We just need to do coolant now, so... This is the moment of truth. I'm using just regular uh, green coolant. I'm not going with anything special like the red coolant or anything like that. But enjoy. Okay, baby. Daddy's going to pour stuff. Okay, okay. Hold on. You stay right here. <laughs> Daddy's going to pour green. Okay, pour juice. Okay? Juice. The car needs juice just like you. <laughs> the 3 4 uses about 2 gallons. Maybe a little bit more. <clears throat> I might have to even go get one more jug. But I'm gonna go run to uh, AutoZone real quick after this and get a radiator cap <clears throat> and maybe grab one more gallon of this just for spare. It's good to pour just a little bit first and then check if there's any leaks. Mm. More! More juice! Ooh, the car's drinking apple juice. See? Nom 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 nom. Nom 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 mm. nom nom. It's a food. Mm. But this is not for you, okay? You don't. You don't drink this. This is for the car only, okay? So you don't ever touch this. Uh, don't touch! And don't touch the engine going vroom, vroom, too loud. Uh, nope. I do plan to change the oil after 500 miles, which will be my clutch. Will be, my clutch will be broken in after 500 miles. So after 500 miles, we're gonna change the oil, and I'm also gonna go ahead and flush the clutch. No, flush the radiator, the radiator coolant again. When you bleed your vehicle, you also do want to kind of park it on an incline, nose up. Uh, mine isn't completely up, but if I have any issue, I'll go ahead and just jack it up. This is the second jug, and it's about to take the whole second jug, so we might need about two and a half. All right, so it did take up two full gallons. There's still, it hasn't filled up yet, so I don't want to start it yet until I have an extra gallon on hand. But this is it, <coughs> radiator. <coughs> we kept the fan shroud. I'm usually not a fan of the fan shroud, but since I have it and it's still in good condition, I went ahead and installed it. You can see this hose here could be a little bit better. It's kind of kinked up right here, but I'm hoping that when, once it gets warm and cold, and once it goes through a few cycle, it just kind of fix itself. <coughs> but <coughs> that's it right there. Cam sensor. Everything's nice in there. Everything's all nice and tucked. ECU box We'll go ahead and keep the hood out of it for now. There is one little issue that 3-4 does sit a little bit higher So we might have to cut the hood brace, <coughs> but I'll talk about that later on You can do the hood brace hood scoop or you can do like a small body lift, but I don't want to do any of those But batteries plugged in we do have to also fill up the uh, reservoir Builds are tight fans good. This is a new fan clutch power steering is good so we're gonna bleed the coolant and also bleed the power steering and make sure the clutch is good as well All right, everyone the moment of truth is finally here. I went ahead and bought myself a new radiator cap <coughs> Pour a little bit more coolant just so that we can bleed it out We are doing the first start the first thing we want to also do is think about safety make sure everything's safe uh, Have a fire extinguisher ready in case something goes wrong. You know, you never know there might be like a fuel leak or something goes wrong So <coughs> be safe uh, start it outside preferably not in a garage or enclosed space and preferably have somebody else there with you But it's just me. I have my fire extinguisher 
<coughs> we're outside ventilated. I have my flashlight because I'm gonna start looking for any leaks inside the engine bay. So have a flashlight, have gloves, um, wear clothes that's dirty that you're willing to start crawling under the vehicle if, if you need to look for something. So we're gonna look, when we get it started, we're gonna start the heat, uh, turn on the heat, full blast, because that's how you bleed the coolant. We're gonna look for coolant leaks. Cooling leaks can happen on the radiator hoses, heater hoses, or the uh, thermostat housing, anywhere along that line, if there is any, and then also the two cooling lines that goes to the throttle body, check those out. Once the coolant's good, we're gonna make sure there's no oil leaks, nothing like that. Obviously, everything should be good. And the next thing we wanna do is check for exhaust leak. I'm pretty confident the exhaust should be good, but I'm thinking that the exhaust from the downpipe to the muffler, that might have a little leak, but it should be good. So check for those things oil leak uh fuel oil coolant and exhaust leak so without further ado let's do this may 4th 2023 165,421 miles 1994 Toyota pickup 3.0 originally 5-speed originally 3.0 swap into a 3.4 first start here we go i went ahead and turn it on off on off already Clutch in. It's gonna crank and it's not gonna start this time, I already know. So we'll let it do that for a bit. <coughs> oh! <laughs> so quiet! We have a check engine light on, which is normal. I think I know what that is. I'll go ahead and grab my OBD2 sensor. Don't worry about that. Holy smoke. <laughs> there it is. Uh, it has almost a full tank of gas. Battery's good. Oil pressure's good. Let's run out real quick and check it out. Thing is so quiet check for leaks make sure there's no leak on the power steering oh man it's so quiet all right no coolant leak it's bleeding right now we'll go ahead and add some more coolant I forgot to turn on the heat. Let me go ahead and turn on the heat real quick. It's smoking over here. It's smoking right here, so... Okay, so that's just the, uh... That's just the, uh, PV blaster. I sprayed some PV blaster on that the other day. It's a very high idle though. Check for exhaust leak. No leaks right here, that's good. Yeah, no leaks. Holy smoke. No smoke. Nice and clean. It is high idle right now though. All right, so we're good. <laughs> Everything looks good. Sometimes the exhaust gasket will smoke a little bit. That's totally normal. All right, we're good. We'll just let it get back to temperature. No fuel leak, check the fuel line. Yeah, so make sure you check the fuel line, make sure it's not leaking. Fuel line looks good. <coughs> no leaks right there. 
go under, make sure everything looks good. All right, we're looking good. It needs to be lower. Just checking my lights. My LED headlights, I'm still waiting for the harness. Right now it's idling around a thousand, which is good. 800, most likely around 800, 900 is good, but a thousand is doable. <coughs> Very good. All that smoke from earlier was on the uh, downpipe. I sprayed some PV blaster on it the other day. Gonna go ahead and bleed the power steering, just turn your wheels left to right. really good right now it's idling around 900 8 900 so that's what you want super amazing super stoked i'm gonna go get the obd 2s uh standard from the full runner and plug it in and see what that check engine light is you guys can see the temperature is good we're in the halfway mark we're just under a thousand nine hundred should be what we're at right now and it has a full tank of gas battery's good it sounds so amazing like it sounds so good The throttle cable is really like tight and sensitive, like it's really reactive, has a good uh, feedback. I got the heat on low right now, so let's go ahead and run the OBD2, see what's going on. I believe this is a, uh, <coughs> so we should have it. there's gonna be a, uh, okay, so we're at 800 RPM right there, so that's what we want. <coughs> I believe the check engine light is for a, um, the uh, speed sensor, which is normal, because I haven't installed the speed sensor. It's for the reluctant ring. And I'll talk more about that on another video. Transmission fluid temperature sensor A. What is that? Transmission fluid. Okay, so that's automatic stuff. So that's totally normal. P0710. Okay, so that's nothing to worry about. I'm going to go ahead and clear it and see if it pops back out. So let me go ahead and clear that code. Oh, so it's come back out right now. So clear it. Okay, so there's no way of so there's no way of clearing that code. It's transmission code, so that's nothing to worry about. Transmission fluid temperature. So that's all automatic stuff. I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, so we're good. Nothing too fair, guys.
So our first start was a success. Woohoo! Great job, everyone. Great job. Special thanks to everyone who helped put me, my wife. Uh, special thank you to myself and all the vendors that I knew. Special thanks to John for wiring harness, all that fun stuff, and uh, toy only swap for the co-intake. Man, thank you, Adam. We're you too, Adam. Adam's the person that I got the motor from, the donor rig. So since we have it off now, I'm just gonna let it cool down for a bit, and then I'm gonna pull that funnel, uh, close it up with the radiator cap. The rest of it, I'm gonna put into the reservoir bottle, and then I'm also gonna go ahead and check the power steering fluid level, make sure it's good. If it's not good, we'll go ahead and top it off. The power steering, uh, the power steering line is kind of curved towards the. It's like two inches, like it's like an inch away from the exhaust manifold, <coughs> and I can adjust that. I gotta loosen it and twist it down more so it'd be farther away from the exhaust manifold so i might do that on a cold day we're gonna lose it's gonna get a little bit messy but i'm just gonna kind of release it and fix that real quick but i'll show you guys that in a bit um so yeah that's what i'm gonna do close it up and i'm gonna go ahead and crawl under the vehicle just do one last more inspection and then we should be good uh, once we do that, I'll go ahead and start it up again and maybe take around the block and just give it a test drive. The clutch feels good. The throttle cable, the, the foot pedal feels amazing. It feels really like there's no free plate or anything like that. It's not tight to the point where it's pulling the uh, butterfly valve open and it's not super loose. So it feels really good. Uh, no headlights, but no big deal. But man, first start is a success, guy. It idled up. It was idling around 1100 for about almost five, six minutes, but that's totally normal. I think it, I think it was building oil pressure and stuff like that. It's a fresh engine, so there's like no oil, nothing like that. So I checked the power steering fluid. Fluid was a little bit low under the hot mark, so I went to add a little bit. Make sure that when you put fluid into the power reservoir for Toyota, don't use power steering fluid. You have to use ATF, automatic transmission fluid. If you use power steering, you're gonna ruin your pump and then good luck, buy a new one. If you guys been following this bill, man, what an amazing journey. I just drove one mile around my neighborhood and man, it freaking dries so smooth. The clutch feels great. Clutch pedal feels great. <coughs> the shifter, it's kind of loose. It's not supposed to be that loose. I have new shifter bushing in, but this one's kind of hard because this one, you have to remove this carpet to access the cover to pop the socket out. But that's all good. It's fine right now. But it drives so amazing. Now, I didn't even go over 15 miles. I just stay under 15 miles <coughs> driving around my neighborhood. And man, it drives so, so smooth. Now, the transmission itself was amazing if you guys remember when i bought this vehicle there was tons of paperwork records and this transmission was rebuilt um locally by a transmission shop here in anchorage back in 2019 the guy spent like two thousand dollars doing it so this transmission has been rebuilt it dry smooth dry amazing i can't wait to take it onto the highway i'm gonna go ahead and install the hood right now see if there's any clearance issue if there's any clearance issue, then we're going to have to cut the hood brace. And then uh, we'll probably call it at night. Um, I do want to get my new front shocks in before I start doing a real test drive. But so far, man, one mile, it drives amazing. The exhaust system is nice. It's nice and quiet. Um, if you give it a little bit of gas, it does have a little nice rumble to it. I'll give you guys a sound check later on. But man, I'm just so surprised. It just feels so amazing drives so smooth and the engine is so quiet the three four no ticking no valve ticks no knocks nothing just nice and quiet we did a good job the power steering line that i was talking about was right here you can see it's a little bit close to the exhaust manifold and if i was to loosen this loosen the bolt and pull this line up more i think it'll be more away or if i push it down towards downwards more but I think it's fine the way it is right there. It shouldn't have any issue. So let's go ahead and I went ahead and double check all my leaks already. Leak, no leak, nothing like that. So we're good on that. I'm going to go ahead and close the hood because it looks like it might rain tonight. So yeah, man, it just runs so nice. So amazing. It smells good too, like a fresh engine. Like everything just smells so good. 
all the new hoses and I'm not sure if I might have to get a new upper radiator hose because this one <coughs> it's good up here but it needs to kind of go out more because this right here this out this the uh, top radiator the spout kind of shoot at an angle I wish it would have shot more like this way so I need to get a radiator hose that goes more like just over here so I'll see how that goes hopefully time because I don't want to put too much pressure it, it might break this uh this this upper upper spout right here so we'll see how that goes everything's good man everything is good the evap box is working well all right we have a successful swap guys 3.4 1994 that's gonna wrap up today's video 3.4 is a success right now it's just time to do a little cleanup enjoy the ride break in the period we have 499 more miles till the clutch is broken in and then we'll go ahead and swap out the gear uh the, the oil the car oil the engine oil switch out the coolant oil you don't have to do the coolant fluid but i want to do it just for the heck of it <coughs> and then we're going to install the shocks this weekend so pretty fun stuff we'll get some ball joint spacer on order because like i say it is rubbing a little bit i try not to do ball joint spacer but since this is just going to be a daily small mile lift i think it'll be fine so ball joint spacer add a leaf in the rear and then we'll be good this is it catch you guys next time hope you guys enjoyed this vlog i'll keep you guys updated on what i do next